Welcome to Record Keeping for NAP. Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Kavitha. We're with the Rural Advancement Foundation International, RAFI for short. This video is brought to you with support from the North Carolina Specialty Crop Block Grant Office. This is the fourth video in our series on record keeping for crop insurance. Today we're going to go in depth about record keeping for the Non-Insured Crop Disaster Assistance Program, NAP for short. If you're not familiar with how crop insurance works, stop. We recommend checking out the Farmer Resources section on our website, rafiusa.org, in order to better cover the ideas that we're going to talk about here. NAP is the Non-Insured Crop Disaster Assistance Program. It is available through the Farm Service Agency. So there are multiple crop insurance policies that cover specific kinds of crops, but they don't cover every single crop that you can grow. So NAP is kind of a catch-all risk management program that provides coverage for crops that don't already have an insurance policy. What does it take to be eligible for NAP? Compared to crop insurance, NAP is a fairly simple program with fairly simple requirements. To be eligible, you need to meet three criteria. One, you have to have a farm number. Two, you have to be a landowner, tenant, or sharecropper who shares in the risk of producing the crop. That basically means you're involved in some way in the production of the crop. And thirdly, your average non-farm income cannot exceed $500,000. So how do you buy NAP? You can purchase NAP on a crop-by-crop -crop basis from your county farm service agency office. Different crops have different deadlines, so you have to always check with your local office. So for example, if you want to purchase NAP strawberry coverage for North Carolina, the deadline is September 1st. But again, this varies by crop and by county, so always double check. And then coverage levels start at 50% of expected production and go up to 65% of coverage. These different coverage levels come with different costs. So be aware of that. The 50% coverage level is just basic coverage, and then you can purchase it in five increments going up to 65%. And again, this will come with some varying costs. How do I apply for NAP? First off, you can only apply for NAP coverage in the current and future years for your operation. You cannot apply NAP retroactively to your operation. For each crop year you want coverage, you need to provide the amount planted, the amount harvested, and the amount sold. In addition, you need to establish your approved yield for each crop you want to cover. Approved yield is the official number in FSA records that shows how much, your, how much yield your operation generates. It is based on your actual production history, so it's really important to keep records in order to have an accurate approved yield. They typically ask for around 4-10 to 10 years of consecutive yield records in order to determine your approved yield. If you don't have this many years of records, you can use what's called a transitional yield or a T-yield. T yields are the expected average for the entire county, so they tend to be not as good as the numbers for your actual operation, but they are a good place to start if you're at the beginning of keeping records. For NAP, you need to track both harvest dates and amount harvested to determine your yield. What does that mean day to day on your farm? It means that you need to keep daily harvest records. Although that might seem like a chore, we promise it will be much easier to take out a few seconds every day to write down what you've harvested versus trying to remember all of it and cramming those records into the end of the season. We recommend checking out our other video, Paper and Electronic Methods of Record Keeping, for tips on how to keep track of your yield. So there's also other res resources if you want more NAP information. The Farm Service Agency actually has an online tool that you can use to keep records called a Crop Production Ledger. It's not required that you use this tool, it's just a good option to consider. So as you can see here, this is a worksheet from the Crop Production Ledger. It just has some basic information regarding production dates, yield amounts, and will help you keep track of those daily records that we've recommended. You can find it on our website and also on the FSA website. The second big thing to record for NAP is how much you sell. NAP requires a daily record of amount sold to be turned in at the end of the season. So you can keep track of this in a few different ways. If you're selling wholesale, you want to keep track of your records. Um, you want to keep track of contracts and bills of lading for your records. If you're selling direct, you want to record the amount of product you bring to market or your farm stand each day. And at the end of your market day, record the amount you've left over. You can do a simple calculation this way to determine how much you've sold without too much hassle. We just threw a lot of information your way, but here are the main takeaways. One, NAP is a great option if you're just getting started with records or if there aren't crop insurance options for the crops that you grow. Two, keep it simple. All NAP requires is your yield and the amount of the crop you sold for the season. Three, keep daily records. Again, we promise it will be much easier doing it on a daily basis than trying to go back at the end of the season. Thanks for watching.